Thea Stilton and the Roman Holiday. Take a pause for introductions. Final preparations. It was a beautiful day at Mouse Ford Academy, and one room in the dorm was buzzing with activity. Pam! A voice squeaked from the inside of a closet. Where's my straw hat with the pink polka dotted turquoise ribbon? A second later, Colette emerged from behind a rack of dresses. She scampered over to the bed and rummaged through an enormous pile of clothes and accessories. How should I know, Coco? Pam replied with a shrug. There must be around 50 hats here but I don't see that one anywhere. At least I found these, Colette said. She pulled out a pair of pink sandals from under a pile of handbags. I simply have to bring them. At that moment, Nikki, Violet, and Paulina appeared in the doorway. Are you two ready? Nikki asked as she looked around the room. Whoa! What happened in here? Did a hurricane hit? It's just our Coco, Pam said with a laugh. She's trying to pack her bags. I told her we would only be away for a week. But you know, Cola. I don't care how long we're staying, Colette protested. What matters is that we're going to Italy, a country where fashion and elegance are very important. I need to be prepared for any occasion. Yes, but we're going to Rome for an archaeology competition, not a fashion show, Violet pointed out. A few days earlier, the Thea sisters had learned that they had been chosen to participate in the International Archaeology Games being held in Rome, Italy. A month before that, Amalia Angel, a famous Italian researcher, had been invited to Mouseford to give an intensive seminar on Roman archaeology. The five friends had signed up for the seminar immediately. And after just a few classes, they were hooked on archaeology. Professor Angel gave fascinating lectures about life in ancient Rome. The Thea sisters loved her stories about the incredible works of art that were created during that time period. I know, but I still need to look Faber Mouse, Colette replied as she tried to close her suitcase without much success. Do you remember how much research we did on ancient Rome buildings, like the Colosseum? Paulina asked. It took a long time, but it was worth it, Violet squeaked. Thanks to that research, Professor Angel nominated us for the competition. I feel like the luckiest mouse in the world right now. I know, Colette agreed as she sat on her bag to get it to close. I was so surprised when our acceptance letter arrived. And just think, we leave today, Nikki exclaimed. She leaned over Colette and snapped the lock on her friend's bags shut. Thanks, Colette Sweet, with a sign of relief. Four more bags and I'll be all set. I just need to find one last thing. What's this doing here? Paulina asked as she pulled something out from behind the chair cushion. That's my straw hat, Colette explained. Way to go, Paulina, you found it. Great, Pam said, hopping up from the chair. Now I think we're ready to go. Rome is waiting! Here's a fun fact about ancient Rome. According to ancient mythology, Rome was founded in 753 BC by Romulus, 
who was raised by a wolf along with his twin brother Remus. Today, the Capitoline Wool, a bronze sculpture depicting the founding of Rome, is considered a symbol of the city. Rome was governed for more than 200 years by seven kings, Romulus, Numa Pompilius, Tullus Hostilius, Ancus Marcius, Lucius Tarquinius Priestus, Servius Tullius, and Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. Once the Republic of Rome was founded, it lasted for five years and Rome became the capital of an enormous empire that stretched across a large part of modern Europe, part of Africa and part of Asia. The Roman Empire reached the height of its splendor in the first centuries AD. The western half of the empire declined quickly, while the eastern half of the Roman Empire, later, later known as the Byzantine Empire, survived until 1453.